Hello, hello, hello. Leavers and believers and everybody else who is listening right now. Welcome to Leaving Hillsong. My name's Tanya and today we are going to Puerto Rico. With me I have Angel and he is born and bred Puerto Rican and born and bred Pentecostal and he found himself at Hillsong Bible College in 2005. Now I've known Angel for a lot of years and uh, yeah we just can't believe it's taken so long to finally make this happen. He has a very beautiful way of expressing himself and it's a just a love the rich tapestry of the stories all coming together and different people's perspectives. So I know you're going to love. Keep moving forward. Part one with Angel. Angel? Yeah, that is my name. That is what my parents decided to call me when I was born. How are you? I'm doing good and I'm really glad that we finally made this happen. Finally. I'm, I'm so glad to talk to you today. This is going to be cool. We were just trying to figure out before how long I've known you for, and it's been years and years since we've been talking. Yeah, been yeah a- it's at least at least a decade, I would say, at least okay, a decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's because you were you got out early, earlier than most. So I guess you kind of would have started earlier than most. It's like smoking, isn't it? Like you quit earlier. Uh, yeah, kind of good, good analogy, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 I assume you mean by earlier than most, you're talking about my time and and in, in Hillsong. Well, you you had left by 2006, so let's kick off. How'd you get there? Where claro. do you come from? Claro. Then why well, did you left Hillsong? Claro, claro. Uh, um, so yeah, you know that dates back to early 2000s, and, and around that time here in Puerto Rico, where I happened to be here, oh. back after many years in the diaspora in Germany, I just got back here a month ago. So here in Puerto Rico, I would say like in the early 2000s, you know, the, the Hillsong media, and it's called like, like Menudo, <laughs> the Hillsong media, was uh, was grabbing hold of, of the uh, of a Latin American country like Puerto Rico. Also because of our colonial relationship with the United States, you know, there's uh, a lot of that English speaking world. But Hillsong is in the other side of the world. So how did it make it over here? Well, because of the music. So I guess early 2000s. The Hillsong United group was was well, hitting it off here. That's 2003, long... four. I mean, that's 20 years ago. It is... That is. Yeah, this is an established brand. Okay. Cool. And then I was, at that time, I was around my 20, 20, 21 years old, 22 years old. So I had just come out of, I was just, I was just finishing my university degree. And I, I, I think I purchased my first United album. And I think in the United album, they mentioned the Hillsong International Leadership College. And, and I was like, wow, there's such a thing that prepares people to do that or oh. any other, because they have other, they, they also had other streams of studies. And I was just finishing my degree in communication. So they had a, a stream in TV and media. And I thought, you know, I'm definitely not pursuing music, but this is an area that I'll be interested in. Now, where had you come from in terms of church, home? Have, what were you brought up as? Oh, Pentecostal. Yeah. Pentecostal. Okay. Full Pentecostal. I was born in it. But I always tell people that, like, the, to give, give a bit of the genesis of my life, to give perspective of how long I've been in church or how, how long I was, my mom was baptized when she was pregnant of me. So I have been in church prenatally. Wow. That's the way. That's good. You didn't miss a Sunday. No. Little fetus on his was there getting the word, you know. (laughs) Amen. Amen. So, you know, so all my life, I was accustomed to that format of, you know, preaching, fiery style music, long periods of music, lively music. But when I... There might be a little bit of Spanish here, so a bit of a disclaimer, sorry. But there there was something about Hillsong. It was a bit more rock and roll. It was a bit more innovative, modern, 
the, the shots. Oh my God, the, the camera shots. That was another thing that got me as a, as a TV and media screen communications student. It was, it, was, it was well done. It was well done. So when I, back then, I, I started flirting around with the idea. And little by little, you know, my parents also helped me out as they, they saw that I was very determined to do this. They supported me going to the other side of the world. So they trusted that. And, uh, uh, and before I knew it, I so crazy to think back then I was, you know, packing up and gearing up and telling my friends about it. Like uh, a couple of weeks, I'll be heading to Australia. Sounds like a natural progression though. Same, same. Claro. Now, what is your cultural background? Why do we have a a mix of Spanish in here and an American accent? What are we doing? Claro. And maybe a little slight of Australian. I care. Right. Australia, Australia, the name just sleep. uh, scarring traumatic mark there's some Good. nice things too puerto rico so this is my this is my 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 homeland i was born here and for those of you who have an idea or those of you who might not well puerto rico is a territory of the united states it's just a fancier way or commonwealth fancier way to use another c word for the real c word which is a colony so and you know it's it's a spanish-speaking country even though english is quite common the official language here, which shows a little bit of our resilience against the colonization ways we've resisted the English, but Spanish is my first language. So, so it is a Latin American country in a very weird political situation. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, your parents are Puerto Rican. See, si, for Puerto Rico, all my family is Puerto Rico, my grandparents. So I've been born, raised here, lived in the States a few years. So that's where I picked up the English. And some years in the, you know, in, in the recent decade, I've probably lived maybe three or four years in the States. I, I, you know, I'm going to do some huge generalizations here, but mm-hmm. surely that culture is much more attuned to that charismatic way. Look, you, you go to a concert in Australia and everybody is sitting in their chairs. That's what I was going to tell you, right? They're like. Yeah, and, and then you see Bruce in Argentina and the crowds are going wild, Spanish yeah. cultures, yeah. which yeah. 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 Costalism, yeah. like hand in a glove, no? Claro, claro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and in that context, you see the, you, you see the, the natural evolutionary cores that culture can have and the beautiful thing, how culture can also basically define how a church goes because because church like a, a church you know like speaking about churches or speaking about any kind of organization when you are in a certain country regardless of how disdain or divorce it could be some gringos coming in with very colonial attitudes there's still going to be a lot of input because the people that are involved are from that culture but even if like so i would say even more if the people that are creating that space are more aware of it that that does that that could happen okay. within churches, but sometimes yes. in churches it doesn't happen all much because there's that more colonial attitude. And I think, yes. yeah, I, yeah, yeah, you know, Latin America, yeah, we have more livelier culture. You know, I, I think it goes with the warm uh, climate, the warm weather, la salsa, la, la musica. It's just more lively, more danceable, and I think that well, this, that does have a say. So you're packing up and you're going to Australia. What are your friends saying back to you? Well, they knew, like most of my friends were from church, so they knew about Hillsong. It was, oh, how blessed are you? You're so lucky. You're going to get to be at Hillsong. You know, Darlene Shack, the United event. And mind you, back then it wasn't as popular as it is now. But but yeah. but the circle of friends I had, they knew about it. And also just, and, and just alone, the fact alone that I was traveling to Australia, for those who did not know about Hillsong, yes. that's exciting. And I would commonly get the, but why so far? And I would just say, why not? You know, but most of the people are curious and happy. And this is back in the MSN Messenger days. So I remember like nice. being in contact with my friends and this was AOL the and stuff. Yep. Yep. ICQ, all that era. Oh, moment of silence for that. Then came MySpace and Facebook. Oh. But that's the context to, 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 to allow people into. How old I am. And is Australia like a magic place? Like when you get there and then the kangaroos will come out and it'll just be sunshine. When I, when I got in, it was, this is my first 
my first ever time living alone, going on of my own. And to be doing it so far away, yeah, it was, it was an impact. I was, I was very excited. I was very, very excited. How old are you, How old are you at this point? Uh, uh, 21, 22. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because right, you've just done a degree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, so, wow. So this is it. And I remember like when I, cause you know, I get picked up the airport. So we get, cause it would be like a bus shuttle and then we get dropped off at Hills. And I start meeting people from different countries. And this is the first time, like a girl from, 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 from the UK, South Africa. So there was a feeling of, Hey, Dorothy, you're not back in Kansas. Anymore. So the, for instance, feeling of interna internationality. And I, and I was, I was in for it. I'm like, okay, so this is, you know, this is kind of, this is part of why I'm here like to, to know that I'm not back home. Yeah, how did you find the application process? Was that easy? I can remember. It was your email and it was, you know, at that time I was so much younger, but it's, it seemed to work its way, you know, quite fluidly. They seemed quite seamless. Welcoming though. I mean, they were happy to accept you and so see, wondering see. how they treated you. See, see, like what? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I think I, I don't want to characterize them one way or another because I have no idea what, but it could have maybe been like, you know, more international students. It solidifies their, their cause. And, and I think at that point, I wasn't the first one for Puerto Rico because okay. Noemi was there, which is the girl I, I, I just met. So Noemi had just been there a couple of months and I knew Noemi because I'm really good friends with her brother-in-law and her sister. And I mentioned Noemi, Noemi, Noemi because we, she was actually out here a couple of weeks ago and I got to see her, which is very special. It was very special. And she was there. She had been there. I arrived in September or August. So she had been there maybe since May or June. Okay. Yeah. So I think she was the icebreaker in terms of Puerto Rican town. Okay. And when you did start speaking Spanish or was yeah. there any? Yeah. I mean, when I met her, it was like, it was. Is it like, you know, Puerto Ricans are called also Boricuas. So seeing another Boricua so far from home, it was very special. Loud of always. I mean, in terms of the Hillsong people, though. Um, ah, no, I didn't know many people who spoke Spanish over there. I mean, maybe some would say, oh, la, amigo, or some kind of stupid shit like that, but nothing too otherworldly. Um, there were a few people from, from some, uh, from, I think from Mexico. But yeah, there was a. I mean, at that point, it was a pretty good representation of many different countries. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, that sounds fun. And so then what happened? Um, I think the housing situation was a bit like now when I look back on it, it was a bit shady. <laughs> because it was so shady because they basically, they're in the suburbs, for those of you who don't know the context. So they basically rent out houses, like suburb houses, which are like three, four bedroom houses for students, right? And they're nearing neighborhoods. And first they allocate me with some, some people there, with some students, and then they change me to another one. And then they change me to another one. And that was, and then I, and then little by little, I start finding out some of the reasons. One of the, one of which was this guy from the US, which is usually the people I tended to have problems with. I didn't have problems with the Australians generally. It was with the frigging gringos. And I usually use the word gringos yeah. in a bad connotation because I have US American friends and I have gringos that I know and they're not and the same. How would you explain that word to an Australian or someone? Claro. Who... Well, gring gringo is just someone with a very colonizing attitude. Someone like just has absolutely no intent of getting to know the culture, no intent of having any sense of openness. So, and that was the kind of dynamic that suited this guy. And like, he started, somebody was complaining about me. Like I was allegedly too speaking, too talkative. And then he, okay. he went to, he went to complain to the college, to the student dean, they're the college, well, the dean of students. And, and then they placed another place. And then they finally placed, I mean, it all ended up good. I'm not justifying what happened, but it all ended up being good. Cause I ended up in a really good place with a really cool guy and with a really cool group of guys. So I'm glad that happened and no way attempting to justify the mediocre, the mediocre really negligent, the, the, the negligence and, and not being very clear about where I was going to end up. 
you know, even when I what, ended up, what do you mean, like, with your, like what, what happened? Sorry. I'm looking irresponsible. Like, as in, you know, um, I just, I just arrived there from the inside of the world and something as basic as having a roof over your head, it was very unstable. So I was just being moved around. Like, like I had not invested any money on that, like to, which basically suggests that they didn't have things very well figured out. To yeah, just, to just really, to just really, it just really, really just move me from, from one place to another. So, you know, so looking back on, I mean, back then I was just like, okay, so I'm just, you know, I was 21, 22, maybe another person would have been suspicious about that. I was not happy. I was not happy to have to pack my bag, repack my bags, unpack my bags. That was not fun. That was not fun. And I remember yeah, yeah. another, I remember another encounter I had with one of the, the second house I was in. Because the first house I was in, it was like, I think that was going to be my, my original house. And it was just, most of them were new students. But then when they moved me to the next one, it was like, we're going to move into this house that has like an elder. Not an elder, just a student that's been there maybe two years. Kind of like, this seems to be like a problematic student. So we're going to put him under the, you know, the care of this guy. So it was this guy. I'm not going to mention his name. So I remember we went to the shopping mall to get some of my things. and. I was we just making conversation. I don't know. I don't know where he goes and says, "Do like you? You do mention you do mention God's name in vain many times." Like, and I was like, "What?" Like, yeah, you keep on saying, "Oh my God, oh my God," and I have not had that sort of interaction with anyone I, in all my life. And I'm thinking, hence, English is my second language. So even if in Spanish we have a similar saying, I was like. What is he talking about? I thought at first he was joking. But he was very seriously offended. Then like, oh, I didn't notice I did that. And then just kind of walking along and continuing the life. It was this very weird feeling. Luckily, I got changed to the final house I got changed to. But stuff like, and this was with a person from the U.S. too. It makes you, there. makes you, well, it makes me think of that word microaggression. Just, just, you know, just a little. Another way of making me feel welcomed by a little subtle discipleship session. Just by the way, you, know, you could fix this about yourself. Mm -hmm. God, God would be less offended about you saying his name. So, so, you know, interactions like those, I remember, I mean, here I am like almost 20 years later. And I clearly remember and I feel bad. I feel like, I don't want to hang out with you. Like, yeah. And these are students, you know, these are not like staff members or anything. But this guy was like, he was, he was playing in chapel and stuff like he was one, again, they, I'm sure they put me into this house because he was going to, he's going to have a bit of a troublemaker. Let's put him into this house and maybe, we'll, and that's how I ended up in the last house with another guy, but he was much cooler and we're still really good friends. So yeah, I mean, those are the first, first two things, just right. like first few days, week or two weeks there. That's interesting. I, I mean, a lot of people report that, yeah. you know, they have those bad things, but. People do make very long-term friends too. That's cool. Claro, like that's claro. true. At least you've mentioned. Yeah, that's nice. Claro, claro, claro. And 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 I look and not not to make a big summary right now and just close everything. But I look back on my time there, and I have absolutely no regrets. I have. I mean, it's part of everything. It's part of the. It's part of the the scaffold that was being built for everything now that was going to be, you know, constructing on my skeleton of life, all the experiences that are to be, that were going to be forming me. And, but Australia, I, I hold Australia in great steam. That's so I had not gone through it. I, you know, probably be very different and I'm very unhappy with where I'm at. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. And yet you weren't to ended up as dissatisfied customer though. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, well, I mean, what, what, I, I mean, yeah. How does it all unfold? I don't even know how long were you there for in the end and right, what was no. the class like? What were classes like? Like you, oh. you just left college, right? Like a real life college. University. Yeah. Accredited university. <laughs> Recognized internationally. Unlike uh, uh, um, uh, a, leg a legitimate uh, university. I'm just thinking it wouldn't have been accredited then. Hey, yeah. My, my, no, my university in Puerto Rico was, accre yes, was yes. accredited. 
Claro, so, claro, no. yeah. for, for legit. So I, I'm mentioning it to draw, up a, to draw up a bit of a contrast. Because Hilson was like, I was going to end up with Hilson with some kind of certificate, which, yeah, it does have some validity, maybe some churches. And the fact that it's his Hill song. But to your question, it was like, I, I, can, I can be pretty extroverted. And when I say I can be, I, I also am aware of how much I've changed from then to now. And I, and I can be a, an introvert, extrovert, or an extroverted introvert. And, and you know, I, I, over there, I, 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 I was, you know, I, I started getting recognized. People started to know me. I was a bit of a funny guy. I was outgoing. But I, 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 I remember the feeling of uh, rushing into, 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 into school, to the, the classes, and scanning that you have a little ID. And that, and you basically scan into classes to make sure that you're attending because they need to keep records because you have students with visas. So you need to have a, a certain level of attendance. I have no, no, no beef with that. And then there were these sort of auditoriums. So there were some of these core general classes that there were like at least a hundred students. Like they were pretty big classes. I was not used to that. And there, I didn't feel very confident. I didn't feel, I felt a little bit left out. And this is not a commentary on them. I'm not trying to pin this on them. Just trying to remember how I felt. And I remember feeling a bit drowned and there's too many people. And I guess um, I started even doubting my English. I, I, I'm like, well, I'm not a first um, language English speaker. And again, this is a commentary on me. No one ever put a finger on me say. Yeah. Nah, this is just on me. Um, and my feeling in the classes were, yeah, some of the professor they they seem to be very easygoing, very cool. I remember like Lee Burns; he was like the the cool guy there, and he would be cracking jokes. He seemed like a very approachable guy. And uh, you know, at that time, I didn't like. I at that time, the things that were being taught, I didn't deem them as. Topics or issues to be problematizing. We talk about angelology or demonology, all these topics that have to do with theological nature. And then they would discuss them with a certain level of security. You know, like they seem quite confident what they were talking about. But I don't remember what I don't remember in the classes was ever there being like really good animated discussions. I don't remember okay. that. So okay. in especially talking about in comparison with my university, which you have at times in social sciences classes and humanity classes, just lively discussions from students, from the body of students, from different perspectives well, of and life. The, and you're a teacher, right? Like you, I'm a teacher, yeah. So you, it's a learning style thing. And you, and I foment that. I mean, just a little parenthesis here. I was just, I, like I said, I was living in Germany. I was teaching in a Walter school. And my ninth grade grew would have some students that would challenge me and I would love every moment that they would challenge me. Maybe it's a cultural thing or whatnot that they felt confident enough to challenge me. I remember there was this girl with, uh, I think she was Russian background and just very humbly, she wasn't like cocky about it, but she's like, I disagree with what you're saying. And I was like, go ahead, ex you know, explain your point. Tell me that's a really good perspective. You're making me think about it. So that dynamic right. wasn't very common in, in there. And this is when I was there, 2005, 2006, I wasn't thinking about that. This is just me looking back in the rear view mirror and looking back at the, ped at the pedagogical experience. And it was just like, you could ask questions. There were students that would ask questions. Yeah, good. That was not forbidden. But when I look back on it, it was just, it was like more of a one way type of thing. One way. So, what made you doubt your English in that context? How oh, well the Australian accent, like Australians being oh, yeah. super, super cocky and super confident, super funny, and I felt like I wasn't. I felt like I wasn't enough. And again, this is a commentary on me. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is a full commentary on me. You know? Yeah, it's the culture within a culture. It's just full, full, you know, many it's layers. Just interesting. Layers. Everyone's perspective, everyone's report is just you know another. Or whatever. So yeah, yeah interesting. And I think that um like I I went through some serious bouts of depression when I was there, like feeling homesick, 
and I'm feeling depressed without knowing that that's, that that was what was happening to me. I didn't have that. Okay. I didn't have that vocabulary. Okay. I didn't know about the certain anxieties that I had that I've had since I was in school. I didn't have that vocabulary. I was just kind of like grabbing myself by the bootstraps and just trying to do better the next day. Try to do better the next day. But I didn't know these things were going on. So I didn't have. So if I, for example, something I started to experience over there was I started missing classes. And it was because of my depression and, and I didn't have a way of pu putting into words. So I just feel like I was lazy. I'm just lazy. I'm a lazy guy. And I know we've made a lot of advances in the last 20 years, Ooh. but you, you would think this would be something that people would see over and over again. You get young people far away from home, study, great recipe, perfect storm, uh, I get, I mean, have, I having get. professionals there, having professionals there in a, in a school setting, you would have a professional, you would have a, maybe a social worker, you would have some people that are repaired, whether they're from church or not. So you would think that even though, as you mentioned, things have advanced, you know, psychology wasn't invented 20 years ago. So, so, yeah. so there are yeah. common traits of what depression looks like, but you it, know, what are surely, things? I mean, surely there would be noticeable you know absenteeism is a bit of a sign someone arrives enthusiastic then they don't what happens do you i mean so did you let anybody know i mean would it have been i felt very guilty i felt very guilty i felt very guilty because i felt everyone was thriving and i wasn't and then again that doubles down on my feeling self-conscious about my my english and i just grew more inward and more inward and I didn't really talk to anyone about it. I would just kind of show up out of nowhere again. And at least in my program of TV and media, the person that was in charge, she was crazy. Like now that I look back on it, she was fucking crazy. Like the, the way that she would encourage us to do volunteering, it was such spiritual, it was such a spiritual manipulation. Literally. Was she was, oh, like literally. She and would, you can would, name who you like if you want. I don't care. It's up to you. Claro, yeah. claro. Yeah. I think her name was Deb Lincoln. I don't know where she's at right now. But she was even like just great. Like she was very hyper and very all over the place. You know, at first, you know, at first I would, my impression was like, oh, she's a very lively person. But then you could see looking back on it again, because then I didn't, I didn't know I was very naive, but, but I knew how I felt with the guilt trip was like exalting others that were doing a good job kind of like when you have a brother why can't you be more <laughs> like him and just just guilt tripping indirectly like if you volunteer way if you volunteer more than you were required to volunteer that's audible did you had there was a basic amount of volunteer time but they were not going to scold you if you volunteered more or the opposite. You volunteer more. It's like if you have the time. I mean, they're not going to obligate you to volunteer more time than you're required. But there was a narrative, and there was also the the constant narrative coming from the pulpit about building the church, about being grateful for the volunteer work, and also with the TV and media crew, you you got to be close to to the celebrities. You know, you got to be close to them. You sometimes be in the green room and stuff like that. So. So you, you felt kind of special. I remember the first time I was like on stage, it was such a, because you could be volunteering in many different classes, but on stage, it's, it's, that's like. What were you doing on stage? stage? You could be, you could be doing camera work. You could be doing cable work, at least as far as TV media people, because there's other groups, there's other volunteers that were on stage as well, but with stage presentation or whatever, I don't know how they were called. But the vibe with this lady Deb was just very, you knew that she had issues. She was not a good person to have in that department, like making these little indirect claims and indirect suggestions about, like, for example, not fully knowing context as to why didn't show up and then just making you feel pretty shitty about like, it. Yeah. What would she do? Like, like basically like just like calling you out, like calling you out in front of the, the rest of the crew. Right. There. You know, not having a sense of sensibility. She was very reckless that way. Just go privately, talk, see what's going on. No, 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 no. 
She was very impulsive. Very impulsive. I'm not saying everyone was like that. She was very unique. She was very like, <laughs> she was very like an exclamation mark. <laughs> and everyone in TV media, everyone in TV media, they knew. Whether they were fully in, they knew at the very least that she was like a bit of whack, 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 whack. And I think her husband was also involved in her. I think her husband was a comedian. Uh, like a real thing. But yeah, those are some of the memories. And then I would just disappear and over and I would just come back. And I would, they would reach out to me, or email or call, but I would just feel so guilty. And I would just lock myself in. So yeah, that was, that was on me. But I was clearly going through stuff. I was just so going things got stuff. worse. So you'd like double down kind of thing. Well, I don't know. I feel like, I don't want to show my face. I'm so embarrassed. And I'm so embarrassed to... To show up out of nowhere, right? How do you, how do you make a smooth transition from not showing up to just showing up? You know, you show up for five minutes and pretend it isn't for twenty minutes. Like it was, yeah. It's kind of I laugh on it now, but it was not fun. I would just sometimes I would not leave my room, and I'm on my own. I don't have my mom or my papa like be like. I was on my own, so. I used to start caving in more and more and more and more until eventually I basically get suspended. And they're like, they rightfully, I mean, in, in, in regards to my attendance, I was not meeting my quota in the attendance. So then and because this, I wasn't making We're my, still in the first year here? Where, where this was, we? this is 2006, sorry. So I started, okay. I started summer 2005. So I would say around Easter time of 2006. Uh, this was kind of starting to come up like as in like as in now you have to go to immigration and go to a, go to an appointment to see what can be done because we have to send in these reports and in the reports it shows that your attendance is not up to par and we're going to drive you there and send a support person with you no 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 yeah i went i went on my own i had an apply i went on my own i i had a friend of mine that went with me and it's funny because she came into the appointment with me like she was kind of like my wife or something. This is a, Elena. Shout out to Elena. She is my New Yorkian friend. And she was a, 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 a balsam, a, a, a well of living water for me. And I really, like my, she was like my sister and we're still really good friends. But she went to the appointment with me and she sat through the appointment with me. Uh, all the protocol of that meeting that lasted probably maybe 25 minutes, but it felt longer <laughs> until they finally delivered the news that they were going to cancel my visa. Yeah, it happened. That college student's fear of all fears, they cancelled his visa to find out what Angel did next. Tune in tomorrow. I have part two ready to go for you. Some of that was exceedingly interesting and more and more interesting comes out in part two thank you as always for your time in joining us in the big old conversation i'm a little bit behind in my own schedule because man this flu or whatever it is that everyone apparently has i hope you don't get it it's been a little brutal I think we're back at it and uh, loads more coming up. Still got your birthday present for you. We might uh, give that to you next week if you behave. And by behave, I mean be kind to yourself. Be kind to the people around you. You just don't know what's going on. And uh, keep leaving Hillsong. And we'll talk very soon. Bye.